So I got a big response to my Truth About Wood Rod video, which I was really happy about because it's such an important topic. But there was a thread down in my comment section of people asking, what about dampness? What about vapor and humidity? These things can cause water rot too. And they're totally right. Even when I was doing that video, I wanted to touch more on the topic of humidity. I just didn't have time because I didn't want that video getting too complicated or too long. But I wanted to cover the issue of humidity because it can be even more confusing than the topic of basic wood rot. So this week I teamed up with Brian Smith of Home Inspections Plus in Franklinton, North Carolina. Brian's a great home inspector and an energy efficiency expert. And he brought his tools and experience out to help me answer the questions, just how damp should your house really be? What problems can this dampness cause? And how can you read the dampness of your own home? I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com and this is a video about home maintenance basics. While humidity levels throughout the house can be very important, inspectors especially focus on just a handful of places where dampness can become a big, big problem. Number one on that list is crawl spaces. So we took a look at this slightly scary crawl space in a 1915 home. It's a segmented crawl space, and the area where we were is on an open dirt floor. And so what I'm saying here is this is a completely unsealed crawl space, and it also lacks a lot of ventilation. For this video, this crawl space was a great place to start because the wooden joists in the floor above our head down here have been exposed to quite high levels of humidity and unregulated air quality. So let's talk a little bit about tools. Home inspectors use a variety of tools to read humidity levels. But there are three basic ones that are going to come into play on virtually every home inspection that they do. And they pretty much all fall under the category of moisture meters or moisture readers. People call them different things. The three types that Brian and I are going to use in this video are these. Pin type moisture meters, which use two metallic prongs to actually punch into wood or any other surface material to read the humidity levels inside. Then there are pinless that do the same thing by just coming in contact with the surface of those materials. And then there's a third category called a psychrometer, which measures the actual humidity levels in the air. In another video, I'm going to discuss these things in more detail. But for this video, if you're interested in getting one of these, I'm going to link a handful of them down below. They're just ones that are highly rated for their category. And Brian thinks, and I agree with them, that you basically can't go wrong with getting a pinless moisture meter. They're more effective for the general uses that you're going to have reading moisture levels around your home. And it's a good thing for a homeowner to have. So you're going to see us using them here. Now, Obviously, crawl spaces are a great place to start because in especially unventilated ones like this one with no ground seal or ground cover, you're going to get a lot of standing moisture coming up out of the ground. You're also going to get mycelium spores coming up out of the ground. As I mentioned in the Truth About Wood Rot video, fungal spores are the basis for rot. I talked specifically about Serpula lacrimans, the spore responsible for brown rot or the most common type of rot that we see in our homes. That fungus and the other types that affect our homes are all examples of mycelium. But the rules I laid out in that first video still apply. Mycelium spores or any fungal type of spore cannot cause rot if they don't have a moisture source. But in crawl spaces that aren't functioning well or doing their job, the standing humidity levels can be strong enough to supply that moisture. So what are those levels? What are the thresholds that you should try to avoid or watch out for specifically in your crawl space? In general, the air is always going to contain a certain amount of moisture. It's to be expected. In fact, you want the air to contain moisture. Moisture is not bad in and of itself. So ideal moisture or humidity levels in the air is about 50% to 65%. That's the sweet spot. Going over resting levels of 65%, which is something that you might see happen in the dampest months of summer, especially a very wet summer, you're getting into territory where the resting moisture in the air can begin to affect the framing lumber in your crawl space. As those resting moisture levels rise, the moisture content in the wood itself will also begin to go up. Wood in houses should always be in a range of about 12 to 14% moisture levels. Here you can see Brian reading this with our two different types of moisture meters. You got the pin type and he's inserting the prongs into the wood and it's essentially using an electrical charge to, to measure temperature and moisture. And then you have the pinless type, which is touching directly to the surface of the joist and what it's actually doing is scanning about an inch or just slightly over an inch into that material. It would do the same thing if you touched it to a wall. But they're both reading the resting moisture content inside that piece of wood. And as you can see in this video, they're reading fairly high. You will get discrepancies between two different types of meters. Until you get into that higher class of really professional grade moisture meters, they're going to suffer a little bit on accuracy. But as you can see what we're reading here in this unventilated crawl space, our levels are out of that sweet range of 12 to 14 percent. Some are reading as high as in the low 20s, others are in the high teens. Whatever the case, we are seeing elevated levels of moisture in this joist lumber. The thing is, nothing's going to happen that fast. 
As I said, rot from humidity problems is not like rot from direct water exposure. Direct water exposure can cause problems to develop very quickly, within a season, sometimes within weeks. Humidity or vapor related rot is going to occur over time. It's actually going to occur over a period of years. If these joists continue to experience these high levels of moisture content, 18% and over, especially 20% and over, mycelium spores floating around in the air coming up out of this unsealed ground are going to come to rest on that wood. In any given year, it might be a small amount of these spores. But when the next year comes around and you get another very damp summer and the humidity levels rise again in this crawl space, it's going to happen again. And the problem is going to get worse year after year, season after season. If this goes on for too long, then those mycelium spores are probably initially going to develop what we call white rot. You can see it here on some of these joists around this HBAC register. Not quite full-blown brown rot, but these fungal spores can begin to eat and erode this lumber. Looking at all these things and scanning around the room, we were both sort of amazed that there weren't worse rot situations already in this crawl space. As I mentioned, this house is very old, and there's just a difference between old lumber and new lumber. Any house built within the last 50 or especially the last 30 years is built with faster growing forms of SPF, what we call white woods, and yellow pine, woods that we use for our framing lumber. Older wood was slower growing and a lot denser. It doesn't give over to rot as quickly. It's quite durable. But if we were in a similar crawl space in a newer house that had these levels of moisture and humidity in them, you would probably already be seeing advanced rot in these areas. So once again, resting humidity levels in a room measured possibly by a psychrometer like Brian's should typically be somewhere between 50 and 65% to be safe. Anything more than 65 is getting too wet. Over 75, you're in a red line. Any exposed wood or drywall or any other type of building material down here that's not, say, specifically masonry is going to begin to wick that moisture. The moisture inside the wood is going to go from our sweet spot of 12 to 14% up over 16%, which is kind of the threshold for that you don't want to go above. Once you're up into 18, 20%, fungal spores are going to have the nourishment they need to start eating that wood and rot will begin. We'll get out of this creepy crawl space though and go up into the main body of the house. Inside homes, you really want a humidity level of 50 to 65%. If your HVAC system is doing its job, it will actually keep humidity levels in that range. This all becomes a problem in spring and fall when I see a lot of my clients either turn off their HVAC or just let it go too long without kicking it on. It's a great way to save energy, but those can be very damp months, especially in a place like where I live, North Carolina, where we're gonna get a lot of rain in spring and fall. If this occurs and you're not cycling air in your house and letting the HVAC system do its job, you can start to see the interior humidity levels in your home go up. And the first place you may start to see signs of this being a problem are in closets. Say you got a pair of leather shoes down on the floor of that closet. Closets already face a lack of ventilation. They're not really tied in that well to the HVAC system of the home. You may start to see mold growth on a pair of leather shoes. By that point, you have a problem on your hands. You've introduced mycelium spores into the environment of your house. They're gonna latch on not just to those shoes, but to your flooring, your baseboards, and especially your drywall. This is why you wanna never go too long without kicking your system on at some point. You want your system running, at least periodically, to keep air moving throughout your house. The second place is a source of many of its own problems, bathrooms. These days, every bathroom should have a bathroom vent or a bathroom exhaust fan. And the primary reason for this is to pull humidity out of that room. Our showers pump a lot of humidity into these fairly small enclosed spaces. Shortly after you take a shower, that humidity level in there is gonna be like 100%. You need to drop it as quickly as possible because again, the moisture could linger for a while above that 75% level. And if this happens habitually, you're gonna once again invite fungal growth. And what it's probably gonna latch onto is your drywall. It's gonna work its way right through that paint, get in the drywall, and once it's in there, you're basically never gonna get it out again without a good amount of remediation. Run your bathroom fan. Keep your bathroom from getting too damp or too humid. I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but real quick recap. Adequate moisture levels in the air, 50 to 65%. Acceptable moisture levels in lumber in your home, 12 to 14, 15%. Get over 16, things are getting sketchy. Get over 18, almost guaranteed fungal growth. And while it's not gonna do anything drastic immediately, those fungal spores will grow over time, year after year, and they can begin to deteriorate the density of the wood, causing that wood to lose much of its structural value. If this gets completely out of hand, then you might just have an entire floor joist system that is no longer rated to do its job. 
So I wanted to clear that up. I hope these two videos in conjunction are helpful to you. If you have any questions, as always, pop them down below. Also, we just started a second channel for our Honest Carpenter Consulting business. I'll link it here. I'm not gonna do the full-fledged videos for that channel that I do for this video. Instead, you're gonna get little pieces of advice, tips, tricks, and we're also gonna explain how our consulting service works because it's not something that a lot of people are used to seeing. As far as I know, we may be the first people in the country to really do something like it. But if you need advice about your home, you wanna get your most important home-related questions answered, check out our consulting service and our new channel. As always, thanks for watching the video. Keep your eyes peeled for more coming out soon. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.